up, Homestead Homies? This is Off Green with Doug and Stacy, and today we have a very special guest. It's Terry, Hello. the elderberry guy, and we're going to learn here how to propagate our elderberry plants, put them in pots, and just kind of get you going. It's elderberry 101, so let's go. We're going to start with these nice cuttings here today. These are uh, this is uh, Adam's variety. These are canes that we cut down right off of the ground, really close. You can do this with any elderberry, what we're doing today, any elderberry on your farm, you can cut it and propagate it like this because the very best elderberries are still out there. Here's a nice elderberry cane and we're going to cut it into sections. If you look at it, it has two buds down here opposite a section and then two more buds, a section, too much, two more buds. That's an opposite type of thing, opposite budded. We're going to cut a 45 degree angle below two of the buds and we're going to go up above two and make another cut straight and that's all you take for an elderberry cutting we like to put that 45 on the bottom so you know which way is down each time so it's always two inches below two inches Get about above. two up two bad all you need are those four nice buds and when we make them we always try to treat them a little bit because we want to make sure that they're nice and sterile and we'll treat them with dormant oil and put a coating of dormant oil like you would on your, all your fruit trees this time of year. So what would now, you recommend? We use a, we use a sesame oil. You can also use mineral oil or neem oil we also work but sesame oil is what we use. And we also started out with an ozone treatment and we make ozone water and we sterilize the, the cuttings in there and then we treat them that way so that when we ship them to everybody they're nice and uh, disease free they don't have any insects. Any mites or anything. So if you're cutting your own you should probably put some dormant oil on them before you put them in the ground. So what you just you just get a cloth and you would just... No you dip them you mix us about three or four tablespoons of the oil per gallon of water and mix it up and put them in there and it'll get coated with the oil coming out of the water and let them dry and they'll be good. Okay perfect. After you make your cuttings, you can store them in different ways. You can put them in a bag like this with a little moss or a moist paper and they'll keep in the refrigerator for weeks till you get them planted. You can also put them right in water and they'll just start to sprout and root right in there and then you can carefully plant these in the spring once it's not going to be cold and uh, freezing outside again. Because if you put them in there and they root, you can keep them in here for a long time. They will much. grow for a really long right. time in water. Just change the water. Change the water. Yeah. But another easy way, and the way we like to plant them mostly, is just take these cuttings after they've been treated and just to put them right into soil. So we're going to plant a couple of these plants up here real quick. So, oh, it's very simple. You can just take a stick and you just make a little hole down in the soil there. Stick it in. You want that bottom bud to be about two inches below. So all the cuttings that I'm sending everybody out from our website to get growing, that's what you want to do. Put them two inches in under that soil, tamp it down, keep it nice and moist, and it'll grow right out of there. And this is great, good compost soil. Right. We, that's, this is actually micro leafage from uh, uh, a, a prepared soil mix. It's really good stuff. And the ones that are started, you could do the same thing, but we'll have to keep this inside until after it's, uh, the weather is straightened up. We'll put that down in there like that. That's all there is to it. Elderberry is one of the easiest plants to grow that I've ever tried to grow. And you've grown a lot, haven't you? I have. He's hundreds and hundreds all. of yeah. kinds. But we love the elderberry because it gives us that good nutrition. We can eat it. We can use it for medicine. And we like it every day. So I can just put this just in the greenhouse. Put this in the greenhouse. Yeah. If it's not rooted out, you can just leave it outside in a sheltered place and it'll take right off. You can put it into the greenhouse and it'll be fine. And if it has leaves on them like that this time of year, then you need to keep that protected a little bit so it doesn't freeze. And that's going in the house. That's going into the house. Yep. All right, let's go plant some out by the chicken house. All right. All right, we're going to put this nice mulch through here. So we're going to layer them pretty thick, aren't we? Yeah. So now why are we planting around the chicken coop? Well, I like to plant around chicken coops because it's what I call a nutrient accumulating and water accumulating area. You got the chickens all around here with their manure. The water comes down off the house, it stays nice and moist in here and it's protected. And at the homesteads, around the chicken house was a place the elderberry almost always grew. That is a definite nugget, wouldn't you say? Yes. A big time is. nugget. 
Yeah, because I could, I always wanted to do something around here and I could never figure out what it was. And the elderberries grow pretty quickly, so it's going to get it's big gonna enough. It's going to grow up to the top of there and it'll be all shady here for the chickens. They'll be able to keep it cleaned out once they get started. We'll have to put a little fence around it for a little while, but right. it'll Chicken all come wire. together. Oh, perfect. So we're going to take this, this old uh, concrete form thing and we're going to make holes in the ground, use it for a dibble. We're going to keep it about 18 inches from the building so we don't crowd it too much. Once you grab the cuttings over there, Stacy, and you can put them in the holes. It, I'm just going to stick this down in there, work it around a little bit. So it's the same principle where you're going down a couple inches? But like always we did remember to put the points down and take it all, just put it all the way down to the bottom. That's all it takes. We'll step around it a little bit. Make and sure how, it's in there. how far apart are they going to be? And we're going to put them about two foot apart. Step on them around there a little bit. Get a little moisture on there and it'll all come in. Before you know it, this Adams elderberry will be nice and vigorous. So why do you like the Adams from? The Adams is one of the three main ones that we grow. And it's an old variety. It's been around about 100 years. And it makes lots of flowers. It's an indeterminate type, so it'll produce over a longer period. So it'll be blooming and looking good. A little bit longer than the others. We also have Bob Gordon and Ranch. We sell those. They they bloom mostly at the same and all at the same time, so we can harvest them just a couple times, and we have the whole thing. So we're putting those in, keeping those one buds above. A little moisture on that will fill all in around it. In a few weeks. I'd say by the middle of March, these will be nice little plants. All right, now we're going to try to protect these a little bit from the chickens until they get started. Yeah. I'm going to put this wire around there. We'll be able to hook it on here. Pull it out. Yeah, I really like this idea, putting the elderberries around the chicken coop. Well, they'll grow well, the chickens will like them. It's really good medicine for the chickens too, you know. Keeps them from getting avian flu, coccidiosis, staphylococcus. Yep, so here you go. You got your little medicine chest for your chickens too, and medicine chest for us, and so that's great. You're a braver man than I. <laughs> if it was you, I'd miss, right? <laughs> More? Do I need to do more? No, I think you're perfect. So now we got this done. So we live in the Midwest. What about people who live in other areas? Maybe, you know, way down south where it's a little warmer. Would this still be a good time to do this? It's still a good time. Anytime you can plant them in the soil when there's going to be a moisture continuously in there for a few weeks, that gives those roots time to start up before they get coming up in the, with the leaves. So right now, almost anywhere that it's thawed out, you can make a hole and stick an elderberry in there and it'll start growing. I can't wait. All right, it won't be long. So now we've planted the elderberries at the chicken coop, which is great because they're getting lots of nitrogen and water right. and they're kind of in a little hedge situation. So why should we put them in a hedge? Well, elderberry is a very vigorous growing plant when you get it started. And if you put it in your really good garden soil, it's going to want to be all over your garden. You have to really work to keep it contained. But in a hedgerow, it's much easier to keep it in there and you can plant other things with it. It likes a whole little guild of plants to grow with it, other kinds of herbs that you can grow for your health. The com you make companion, them all plant. companion planting them in there and then you'll have a whole row of hedgerow for medicine right there. So what would you suggest? That you, if you were doing a row, maybe on a fence line or against a building, what would be good to put with those? Well, 
any of the, any of the any of the perennial herbs that'll keep coming up in there. But I also like other fruits in there. Also, I like to put black raspberries, or in a larger one, you can put some nut trees, or some filberts, some pawpaws, maybe some persimmons. They're all things that like to kind of grow in the same communities, and we can eat all those, and they'll come up and be beautiful all together. And you can just manage it and let it grow your medicine right there in the hedgerow. And that's what we're all about here. All right, well, I look forward to seeing those in a few months when they start blooming. They'll probably be up about waist high and blooms on them by July. Check them on Instagram. Right. They'll be there. We'll look for them. So if anybody needs any cuttings, we are making cuttings of the new types and selections right now. And they can order them online from River Hills Harvest from our online site there. And there's three we really like are the Ranch, the Bob Gordon, and the Adams. And today we planted the Adams. The website has all kinds of great information. It's brand new. We just started a new one this month, and uh, we're excited about it. We think it looks really good. And before we go today, I wanted to ask you, okay, if, if there's someone who doesn't know anything about elderberries, or some people who do know something about elderberries, what are some just things that you could tell us about elderberries? Well, you know, elderberries has been used for medicine for thousands of years, and Hippocrates was one of the first real lovers of elderberry and he wrote an entire book on elderberry and he thought he could heal any part of your body with some part of the elder. So it has a long tradition. But one of the things that's nice about the American elderberry, we have two more antioxidants in it than we have in the European type elderberry that most people use for medicine in this country. Sure. So you want to look for that American elderberry in particular because you get those extra antioxidants in there and it's our domestic plant instead of something from overseas. And it was it you were telling me earlier about the ones from um, uh, uh, Europe that as you when you bottle them for the juice, they they, they turn, turn brown. brown. That's why you can't purple. find pure elderberry juice hardly any other place. Because the European stuff doesn't make a good juice the way it is unless it's processed and condensed and stuff. It has to be stabilized. Whereas the American, what we produce is pure elderberry juice. You can get it in those bottles. It's low heat processed. And it's the best stuff for the health, for your health that you can get. Perfect. All right. Every time we visit, I learn so much about elderberry. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But if you guys want to learn more about elderberries, we did a great video with Terry. The link is right there over his left shoulder. And check it out because it is great. He talks so much and everything you want to know about elderberry. So check that video out if you have not watched it. Other than that, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Get those elderberries in or get those cuttings from Terry. But uh, we'll see you guys later. Thanks well, Thanks again. a lot for having me here at the homestead. It's beautiful here. Keep growing. Yeah, keep those elderberries growing. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a homestead homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you, you tomorrow. tomorrow.